right. Well, I just want to say how great it is to be back at Slush. Um, I think it's been obviously a weird time for a lot of us. It didn't happen last year, but as someone who's been coming uh, since 2014, it's really great to see everyone back. And, and I also want to make sure we acknowledge and thank all the volunteers that make this happen. It's really hard to believe that you know a bunch of college students make something like this happen every year. Um, and so with that, uh, I'm Eric Liao, I'm, I'm with IVP, one of the general partners there, and it's my pleasure to spend some time um, and help introduce some of you to Oscar Isarnma, the CEO and co-founder of Ivan. And I figured maybe just before we jump into a lot of the substance, I'd ask a, a question that was certainly on my mind um, when we started to get to know each other, which is, why is your logo a crab? Right. So, uh, good question, and you know, good to be here. Uh, we've been coming to Slush every, every year since we started building Ivan some six years ago. And early on when we started building Ivan, you know, we, we have a founding team of developers. We wanted to build you know, a platform for, that we would have loved to use ourselves, something that helps you know, us to you know, just work with data, not have to manage all the data infrastructure. But I can come back to that a little bit later. The crab comes in, you know, to the picture when we started thinking about like what is it that we're doing, how are we going about things. You know, we knew that you know we we were building a platform, a product. It needs a, you know an identity, a name, a visual identity, and we wanted to do, do something new, and something new, something that looks new, something that looks fresh. You know, we're managing data, but we want to not look like you know your old school. Uh, database companies, you know, you can get some of the names up there. So we, uh, we looked at a couple of logo proposals and I ideas for the, for the visual identity and uh, we had four proposals. There's four founders at Ivan and, you know, we, we uh, cast votes between these and, you know, one, one proposal was a crab, the other one was something completely different, a little play on a letter A or something like that. Our votes were split, so I asked my then three-year-old daughter to, you know, cast the deciding vote, and she picked the crab uh, for us. And that, that, we've been working with the crab ever since then. <laughs> sounds like a, sounds like she made a good choice. Yeah, yeah, I'm very happy with the, the yeah. choice that that we made back then, and that she picked. Yeah. And so we've added a little bit about what the company does. Uh, you've shared a little bit, um, but you know, talk about what inspired you to start the company. And then maybe we can talk about you know, what, what brought you to Slush and, and what role Slush has played in helping your fundraising journey um, over the years and over the rounds. Sure, sure. So myself and my co-founders were working, working with all sorts of data infrastructure. It's, you know, the invisible plumbing of the internet, databases, security, uh, networks, all that, that fun stuff that we really enjoyed always working with. But we found ourselves you know, working with different kinds of organizations here in the Nordics, solving the same problem again and again and again for different kinds of, kinds of you know, companies and organizations, many very tech-savvy ones, but we're still you know, struggling to manage the data and how to spend enormous amounts of time on that instead of spending the time building something that their actual users would want to you know, have and want to you know, do, do and you know, the way they would want to interface with the company. So back in, in 2015, uh, we decided to stop doing everything else and wanted to start building a product, a platform that we would have loved to use ourselves, something from developers for developers. So we want really to build something that makes developers' lives better, easier, you know, happier, something that allows them to focus on building applications rather than fighting infrastructure. And you know, we didn't have a lot of, lot of uh, you know, strategic thinking behind everything we started doing back then. We just thought that, hey, there must be other people out there who are struggling with the same problems, and we wanted to build something that you know, is appealing to them and that they would find, find useful. And you know, we didn't spend that much time thinking about like, like how to go to market with this. We just had a naive belief that, you know, build it and they will come. Yeah. Well, one of the things I love about the story with you and your co-founders that maybe a lot of people don't know is that you already had a successful business before <clears throat> pivoting to start Ivan. Um, and you took a lot of the learnings that you, you guys uh, had and the tools you had built for yourselves and basically went dark for a year and you know, turned off all revenue to then turn that platform into what you could then purpose for others. And, I, and that sort of conviction that the market you're going after and the pain point that you are feeling uh, is something we really look for uh, in, in the entrepreneurs and the companies that we work with. Usually, are you trying to solve a real problem? Um, does this market exist? 
and it, and it turned out, obviously, it did for you guys, and maybe not the way you thought, because, you know, why don't you tell us a little bit about the first customer you, you actually got, because I think that's also a very yeah. important milestone. You think you've got a product, you think you have a market, but until someone actually pays you, it's a hobby, right? That's the difference yeah. between a company and a hobby. Yeah. That's a good point, and uh, you know, as you mentioned, like we had been running a business for you know for some years with my co-founders prior to starting Ivan, and uh, we did we, we weren't really part of the startup ecosystem. Like we weren't part of the you know Alto ES or or you know the, all the you know cool cool organizations that set up Slush in the first place. Uh, we've been to Slush every year, and you know this has been a great place for us to learn more about the ecosystem and meet all sorts of people here. But we really built the first version of the product just you know between the four of us and. Uh, we, you know, built a data platform. We created, you know, Postgres service on Google Cloud and on AWS and some other clouds. And uh, we thought, like, hey, Twitter is probably the place where we should announce this. And you know, out of all places, nobody was there to tell us that you know you don't launch products on Twitter. But that's what we did. So we announced Ivan on Twitter beginning of 2016. And uh, you know, having worked with software companies here in the Nordics most of our careers, we thought our customer base would consist of maybe like Nordic startup companies, maybe somebody from the Valley. But the first customer that, that signed up, you know, seeing these Twitter ads on, you know, in their you know, feeds was a Mexican trucking company. Say that Something, again. What was it? A Mexican trucking company. <laughs> Something completely different than we had, had imagined. Uh, you know, it, it, was, it was really cool to see you know, our product in the hands of, of somebody so far away building something that we didn't really understand. But it was really an eye-opening moment for us when we realized, like, you know, the you know, all companies are becoming software companies, and even companies like you know them, you know, they want to apply these technologies and move forward. They are not in the business of data management; they're in the business of of building you know tools that app, you know are applicable in their business lines. And that's you know been a very very uh, you know guiding guiding uh, principle for us. You know, ever since then, we want to be able to build things for others who are building what matters. Yeah. And, and what was the size of that first order? That must be a, a number you. Were uh, yeah, so you know the way we built Ivan is you know AWS was already pretty popular, growing. You know people, some people back then were already you know happy with the business model. You pay for what you consume, and we thought you know it's obvious. Like every developer wants to work with that kind of a model. You can try out things. You don't have to sign up for a long-term commitment. Uh, it wasn't universally you know uh, accepted model back then. Still not quite today, but more and more are getting the notion. And you know AWS is. Pretty successful business, I'd say. Yeah. So these folks started with Ivan. Like I think they were paying 200 bucks a month to us, which of course wasn't quite enough to you know pay the salaries of our four founders. But you know that's where it you know started. Got to start somewhere, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so that was 2016. Um, I think let's take it to Slush. So you were um, the business was growing, making progress, to raise a seed round uh, from Lifeline, and then you know maybe talk about um, your first experience. I know you mentioned you'd been to Slush many years, and this is your first time on stage. So maybe now you've you've made an ascent, ascended to that level. Maybe t what, what what did you get out of Slush in 2018? You know, yeah. as you were thinking about raising your A. Yeah. So like Slush has really been a great event for us. I I think you know. Slush has, has a special place in, in you know our hearts. You know it's been such a great place to meet with you know other people in the ecosystem, investors, founders, operators, and you know early on we you know after we had built the first version of Ivan, we came to Slush to you know look for funding to help us scale the company. But we really struggled to tell the story of Ivan. Like it made sense to us, but it wasn't for some reason quite as obvious to you know everybody else out there. So we you know got a lot of a uh, lot of uh, no's uh, in you know. In, in, our, in response to our, our request for funding, but it helped us sharpen the story. And we, as you know, mentioned, you, we went on to raise a seed round from Lifeline Ventures here in Finland between slushes. But uh, slush 18, uh, I had been using this matchmaking tool, the one that everybody here loves, uh, and uh, we had a bunch of meetings lined up. But because of some little technical issues. Uh, I was almost, you know, almost missed my meeting with Early Bird uh, Venture Capital, uh, German VC that that we had a meeting with. Uh, out of the 30-minute slot that we were allocated, we, we only got to spend like 10 minutes with Paul Clem from Early Bird. But that, uh, you know, was it, that was a good 10 minutes, and uh, we uh, kind of <laughs> kicked it off there and, and uh, went on to close our Series A uh, afterwards. Yeah. We did meet with a bunch of other uh, investors back then, and uh, I think. 
maybe the thing that I found found here is that you know you get to meet so many folks, you get to talk about what you're building, you get to hear about what you know what interests them, what are they looking for, and you can look for who actually gets your story, what interests them, you know, do you feel like you you know you'd like working with those people in the long term, and that's that's really been a, been something that we that has worked out for for us, and you know that led us to another uh, you know meeting a, a year later with with you folks. Yeah. Well, and you said, you know, that, that was a good 10 minutes spent, but some of the other meetings maybe w weren't so productive. I, I think there's one story you shared with me that I, it might be worth, um, I, I think, it's funny in hindsight, but what, what, was the, uh, what was the quote that you got when you were doing, you know, a road trip and a road show with some investors elsewhere? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so Ivan has always had a global customer base, and, you know, I spent quite a bit of time in the U.S. Uh, prior to the pandemic meeting with our customers and partners back there, and I was also meeting with, with uh, potential investors in the U.S. over the years, and, and, you know, I think this was end of 2018, uh, when I was I was meeting with a bunch of investors there, and you know somebody was you know interested in, in what we were building, and, and you know thought it, maybe this makes sense, but no American you know VC is gonna drop 10 million bucks into a Finnish company. You know if you want to get funded, move over here. Well, he was wrong. We've invested over 75 million at this point, so clearly that that American VC <laughs> was was uh, incorrect. I'll say mildly. Yeah. Um, yeah. But <clears throat> so so talk you know as you think about that that journey, and you've. Um, how, how have you sort of thought about being global from day one, where your customers have been, where, where the organization is, because now you yeah. have um, folks around the world. How yeah. have you built a global team? Yeah, so we did uh, go from you know, four founders to a team of around 300 individuals now uh, all around the world. Uh, we are headquartered here in Helsinki where we got started, and roughly half of our staff is based here. But we're building a product for the internet, and our customer base is global. We have customers in more than 50 countries around the world, on all continents, and uh, you know, we, to serve them efficiently, we also have our team members all around the world. We have you know, folks in, I think, 15 or closer to 20 different countries uh, around the world right now. We're just opening up an office in Singapore and you know, going to set up something, something interesting in Japan uh, next year. Uh, but for us, like, why did we do that? A lot of companies uh, that are being formed right now, I think, are very focused on their home market. And in some businesses, I think that makes a lot of sense. But for us, building like B2B tools, that run on the internet, you know, run in the cloud. We shouldn't be limiting our, you know, customer base or ourselves to thinking about just, you know, the local economy here. You know, Finland is a small market. Like, if you build just the Finnish version of something, uh, I don't think there is much success to be, you know, had in, in that space. You, you want to build something that, that, you know, has a universal audience. And for us, I think, you know, one of the struggles we always had over the first couple of years was. We, you know, we were developers, we built a tool for other developers. Many investors, many operators didn't really get, like, why does this matter? Like, like you, can you sell this to a business person? And you know, it's taken us a long time to figure out how would that work. But there's, there are 30 million developers out there. That's a pretty big audience. You know, that's something that, that you, know, you can, you can uh, you know, provide great tools to. And, when we got started with Ivan, we thought we were a database company, and it took us a long time to figure out that maybe we're more of a developer tools company, and we can address this audience of tens of millions of developers. And you know, during 2019, I had been talking to my team about like we shouldn't be looking up to like what Oracle is doing. We should be looking at you know, what some other B2B uh, you know, developer tool companies are doing, like companies like Datadog, you know, Slack, GitHub. You know, building B2B tools that look quite similar to what you would expect a B2C uh, tool to look like. And then, you know, I was introduced to this guy, and, you know, in, in what, you know, 10 minutes I found out that he had invested in all these companies that I had been, you know, you know talking to my team about. Yeah, well, that, I mean, so I think that's an important point, you know, when you are in these discussions, at least from our perspective, too. It is a mutual selection process in fundraising between entrepreneur and investor. You know, certainly investors are looking for uh, alignment on market size and opportunity, but I think also the same is true for, for an entrepreneur. And, and certainly, when we uh, when we met, we, we recognized that you know to go back to the stat that you said, you know, 30 million developers on the one hand, that's that's a, that's a lot of people. That's a big market. But I guarantee you that anyone here who works um, at a startup or as a founder, there's not you're still having a hard time finding developers. So there aren't enough of them out there. And when you create tools that make people more productive, and in this case, developers. 
we think that's really interesting, and I and I think that you know the the, the growth of the company has certainly uh, supported that thesis. And and if I think about, and I don't want to say it's a surprise, but it's been you know you have a belief when you make an investment as an investor that the things you believe around the market size and the opportunity will come true, and when they actually do happen, it's quite rewarding. And and I think again the credit goes to the to the organization that that you've built. Yeah. So Eric, uh, tell me about so we met here in Helsinki 2019, uh, you know, around Slush. Yep. So after that meeting, you went back to the, you know, Valley and, you know, you spent some time with your, your uh, partners. Yep. Like, how did you describe Ivan to them? How did you convince them that this, this all makes sense? Well, I think, you know, for good fortune, we've had a, a, a history of success um, working with great companies in, in Finland, going back to MySQL and then, uh, and then Supercell. And, Ivan was the third company we invested in, uh, based in Helsinki, and Supermetrics is the fourth. Um, and so, so there was a very um, keen view that that this is a, a market with a lot of talented people. Um, we believe that well, we're looking for the best companies anywhere, uh, which I think is actually a great thing for all the founders and, and entrepreneurs in the audience. I think the world has truly changed in terms of uh, the belief that great companies can be started anywhere, and certainly, um, you know, capital will come will come find you. Uh, and 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 I think if anything, the pandemic has, has accelerated that trend. Um, and and so we 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 saw those things, uh, believed in the thesis, really liked again the fact that you and your co-founders had the conviction to basically go dark and quit your jobs and put a lot of personal uh, risk on the table to pursue a vision. Um, and we found that a lot of the best companies that we've invested in have really uh, founders that, are, that, are, that have a strong belief and a strong pain point that they're trying to solve. Because you kind of have to be a little bit crazy mm -hmm. to quit a job and start a company. Um, and I have a ton of respect for, for all of you that, that are doing that. Um, and then, you know, when, when we sort of, uh, this is the boring part, but then you looked at the numbers, and, and um, I think I said this to you at the time, but the only, other similar case that we had seen at the similar stage of development was actually, you know, was was Datadog, and that yeah. turned out to be a pretty pretty good company and a, and a very uh, a, a successful company that we're lucky to be involved with. Um, so it actually was not that that hard to uh, to give, convince people, um, right? At least on our end. Yeah. So you know, somebody said that you know all you know good ideas look like bad ideas before they're obvious. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and it's true. So that's certainly, you know, what we've uh, we found it with, with Ivan. Like, you know, we set out to build something that we really strongly believed in. And over the years, you know, there were people who didn't get it, but that didn't, you know, get us sidetracked too much at least. And, you know, we were really focused always on our customers, on our product, and you know, trying to figure out what else can we do for our customers, not you know, trying to second guess you know, or you know, what what some other people would like us to do. Like we wanted to do you know, what's best for our customers, and that's where we found a lot of success. Yeah. I think you know, talking about that, you know, do you have any great insights you you know you'd like to share with you know other founders, like how you know how to build up you know a company that you know gets you you folks in, interested in them. Yeah, I, I think the things that we go back to, and we're, we're a reasonably selective firm, we, we make maybe a dozen investments per year. Um, I think it is, I'll say some of the things I said, a mutual selection process. Um, we're looking for entrepreneurs that have you know, clear, a clear sense of purpose, um, are building a, a team, because certainly as you go from even starting with four, it's a, it's a tough job to build a company and get something off the ground. And so you want to see that there's evidence that the founders can expand their responsibilities, attract people, and um, and grow an organization. Because ultimately, you know, any anything that is that as large as we all hope something can become will require a lot of you know blood, sweat, and tears from a lot of people over the years. So that's really important to us. Um, we're patient investors, and so I think sometimes uh, timing plays a role in, in in investments. Particularly when we think about when a market may develop. I think we've been very excited to see the demand across the board for cloud-based um, developer tools and, and just the migration to the cloud. Uh, that will continue, I think, and I, probably a lot of you in this audience are also going after that, that, that opportunity. Um, so we, we look for things like that. And then I think, you know, one, one of the things I guess I'd turn around and ask you is, uh, as, a, as a tip maybe for this group, because of your point, you know, Helsinki is a relatively small um, city, a city in a relatively small by population country, of course, you've, got, you've had to be global, that's only become more difficult or more mandatory, you know, with the pandemic. But what are maybe some nuggets that you might have around building a, a culture globally and making sure that, yeah. you know, colleagues who are in Helsinki who have never met their colleagues in Australia and Sydney can feel like they're on the same team? Yeah. So good question. And that's really 
I think the hardest part about building a startup, like it's, it's all about the people, right? Now, when we set out to build Ivan, we had, I think, like three core principles. So, you know, we wanted to create simple solutions for complex problems. We wanted to automate everything, you know, to be able to support this scale. And we wanted to hire the best people, you know, to do all of that. And we've gone from, we were around 40 people when the pandemic set in, and we were working out of a couple of locations, Helsinki, Berlin, Boston, and, you know, just set up something in Sydney. Now we've, we are almost 300 people, and, you know, trying to, you know, make sure that everybody's aligned with, you know, the company vision and the culture, that's, that's hard, but that's also something that, you know, where investments make a lot of sense for, for all of us, and that's, that's something where, you know, all founders of companies, not just you know, who, you know the CEO, but you know all, all the early employees, all the f founding team members, should you know spend a lot of their time, you know, thinking of like what are we building together, how are we aligning everybody around this, and the company is changing all the time. You know, when it's four people, it's a different company than when it's 40 people. When it's 100 people, it's again a different company, and you need to be able to you know, tell the story and take the people with you on the journey. Not everybody, you know, will be able to and will want you to be on that journey. A lot of people want to work in a small setting and a small startup, but you know, we are tr working hard on, on, on you know taking everybody with us on this, this scaling journey. So, yeah. and so we, um, well, at least in my mind, you know, sort of fundraise fundraising rounds are milestones, but they are important ones and um, you know we, we obviously announced uh, the C1 extension um, I guess about a month and a half ago uh, at, at a roughly two billion dollar or euro either plus or minus it's probably you know in that range today um, is it hard to believe considering you know where you started that that's that's this milestone and then you know at the same time obviously the expectations continue to rise what is how do you feel like you know you want to tackle the future uh, yeah. from this point forward too so you know, we've found a great, I'd say we've found a great product market fit. The market we are in is, is great. We're able to, you know, build much more of Ivan. We're able to serve more customers out there. You know, we've been to Slush every year, uh, and, you know, the company has been different each year. Like, when we f were here for the first couple of years, we had a, one of those uh, tiny booths at the startup, uh, you know, Alley here. Now we have a much, you know, bigger presence here, and you know, we've we've uh, certainly benefited from the ecosystem around around us. We participated in in many other, you know, bigger companies startup programs over the years that have, you know, been very helpful for us, very good for us. Uh, some of those have led into, you know, interesting product collaborations with those bigger companies, and we continue to work together uh, to this day. So now this year at Slush, so we, you know, we've come come a long way, and we think it's you know our time to give back to the community and give back to the startups. And we're launching our you know new startup program called Cluster uh, here at, at Slush, uh, you know, today. And there's gonna be gonna be some uh, something interesting happening at, at our booth, uh, uh, just you know behind you folks uh, in a couple of couple of minutes. Uh, but before we get to that, you know, there's a little video that we'd like to, you know, show you about, you know, what's the program all about. Entering the world of startups can be hard. Poor decisions made early in life can haunt them long into the future. There is safety in numbers, but some may still fall by the wayside. Ivan Cluster offers startups a helping hand and the freedom to relax and focus on growing stronger. So, Cluster is Ivan's new startup program offering, you know, uh, Series C and A startups uh, free access to our platform, helping you just focus on building your products without having to, you know, worry about the data infrastructure. So it's up to 100k in free credits for a year, and applications are just you know opening, and you can hear you know hear more about cluster uh, you know at our booth right there, or read more on our website. You know, hope to see many of you sign up.